Hi everyone, my name is Christina and I'm the Education Coordinator with the DuPage County Farm Bureau. And today we're going to be talking about a special type of food and it's actually my favorite kind of food and it might be some of yours too, and that is pizza. Now you may be wondering why are we talking about pizza? I thought we were going to be learning about agriculture and farming. Well, have you ever stopped to think about where all the ingredients in our pizza come from? So all of the ingredients that are on our pizza actually start on a farm. Um, they either come from plants or animals. So we're going to go through some of the different pizza toppings and see where they actually come from and how they get onto our pizza. So first, I want to start us off with a poll in your classrooms. So if cheese pizza is your favorite kind, please raise your hand. All right, you can put your hands down. Now, if either pepperoni or sausage, the meats, are your favorite type of pizza, go ahead and raise your hand. Okay, you can put your hands down. If you like either peppers or mushrooms, go ahead and raise your hand. Okay, and put your hands down. And if pineapple is your favorite kind of pizza, go ahead and raise your hand. All right, so I'm guessing that most of you probably said either cheese or pepperoni is your favorite topping for pizza. Well, there's a lot of different things we can put on pizza. So let's start at the very bottom. Let's start with the crust. So pizza crust is made from dough that we bake. So what is the main ingredient in pizza dough? All right, if you said flour, you are right. Flour is the main ingredient in pizza dough and we actually get flour from a crop that we grow. And that crop is wheat. So in Illinois, we grow a wheat called soft winter wheat. And this wheat is made into flour that's used for things like cookies and cake and pretzels and things like that. Now wheat is a little bit different than some of the other crops that we think about. A lot of crops that we've talked about so far have been planted in the spring and harvested in the fall. Well, we actually plant our wheat in the fall and harvest it in the, the summer. Um, so Wheat is planted in the fall after other crops have been harvested and it will lay dormant throughout the winter and then at late winter it'll start growing again. You can see in this picture here that the wheat's starting to pop up here um, in the, the early spring. Now in around May um, it's going to put on the head and the head of wheat is this top part here and that's where the kernels are located. The kernels you can see in this picture here those are what we want to keep from the wheat. That's what we're going to grind down and make into the flour. Now here in Illinois, we harvest our wheat around late June or early July, and our wheat grows best in Southern Illinois because it has a longer growing season because the climate is a little bit warmer. So when we're ready to harvest our wheat, we have to use a special machine called a combine. Now, if you watched our corn video, you may notice that this combine looks a little bit different. Um, we've actually changed the head, so this front part here on the combine, um, and this part is what's going to be cutting the wheat. So it looks different than the corn head that was in our other video. So I have a video here to show you of a combine harvesting some wheat so you can see how it works. So let's go ahead and play this. All right, so you can see it moving through the field and cutting the stalks. Now the wheat, once the kernels are separated from the rest, are being stored up here in the grain tank. Um, and then you also see that the stalks and chaff are being blown out the back. Now wheat is pretty cool because it actually gives us a byproduct or a second product, and that is straw. Um, so farmers will actually come back through the field and they'll rake up those those wheat stalks um, and bale them into straw bales. Um, and we use straw bales for things like animal bedding or plant bedding, or you might buy them at the store to use as fall decoration. So that's pretty cool. All right, so that is our wheat for our crust. So let's move on to our next ingredient. 
the pizza sauce. Now I'm sure you guys know what the main ingredient in pizza sauce is, right? Tomatoes, yeah. So there's also some other things that go into pizza sauce that we use as spices to flavor it. Um, so things like oregano and basil and garlic, those all come from plants as well. So you can see the leafy greens, we've got our basil and oregano, and then our garlic, which kind of looks like an onion. It grows under the ground in bulbs, similar to an onion. Um, so you may have seen your parents use the powdered seasonings of these um, to season your food, um, but these actually start off as plants as well, and then they get added into the pizza sauce to give it that flavor that we like. So let's take a look at the main ingredient, our tomatoes. Now, are tomatoes a fruit or vegetable? All right, you've probably heard that tomatoes are actually a fruit. And if you think back to our pumpkin lesson, if you viewed that, um, you might remember why they're considered a fruit. So tomatoes are considered a fruit because they come from the flower of a plant and they have seeds on the inside. So tomatoes are actually a fruit. Now it takes two to three months for these tomato plants to grow their tomatoes and be ready for harvest. Um, and the tomatoes that we buy at the store are hand-picked, um, the whole ones. But the tomatoes that we use for processing for things like tomato sauce for our pizza or ketchup um, or things like that, they're actually picked by machines because we don't have to be as careful with them. It doesn't matter if they get bruised because they're going to be smushed down into sauce. So I have a video here that kind of explains how tomato processing works and the machines that it reuse. So let's check it out. The tomato harvester mechanically picks up the tomatoes from the vine, picks out the soil, and goes through a sorting step where the debris is removed using a suction fan that blows the debris out the back of the machine. The tomatoes go through a color sorting machine, and then there is a final sorting step where a worker hand sorts the tomatoes to catch any discolored tomatoes or field debris that were left in after the machine sorting process. The tomatoes are then transported over into the trailers on a conveyor belt. Once the trailers have been filled, they are removed from the tractors and are transported to tomato processing facilities. Thank you for watching. All right, so that's how tomatoes are harvested. So pretty cool. We don't really see this here in Illinois. We don't really have any big tomato farms here. So pretty neat to see how they actually harvest those. All right, so let's go on to our next ingredient, the cheese. And this is probably my favorite part of the pizza and it might be yours too. Now cheese is mostly made from milk. So what animal gives us milk that we use for cheese? All right, you probably said a cow. Well, dairy cows uh, give us milk that we then use to make our pizza cheese. Now the cow in this picture, this is called a Holstein cow. Um, Holsteins are a breed of dairy cow and they're actually the most popular breed of dairy cow in the United States because they give us the most milk. Now these cows, um, they're all female um, and they have to have a calf in order to give milk. Um, so once they have their calf and they're ready to be milked, um, they usually are milked two to three times a day and they produce eight to ten gallons of milk every day. Now you may notice that this cow has a couple ear tags in her ear. And ear tags are actually really important because they help farmers distinguish between the different cows. So cows probably look pretty similar when they're out in the pasture, um, but we actually have to track the cows um, to track how much milk they're giving, their nutrition, their activity, things like that. So cows actually store their milk in their udders um, and we use milking machines to pump out the milk. Um, and these milking machines are really gentle. They're just like a little suction, kind of like a calf suckling. Um, so once the milking machine is hooked up, it only takes about five minutes to milk the cow. 
Um, before, when we did milk mostly by hand, it would take at least twice this long to milk a cow. So milking machines are really important to farmers. Now, the cow's milk production is also tracked by computers. So you can see in the second picture here, um, this is the screen that's showing the cow that's currently in the milking machine. Um, and it's gonna show how much milk she's giving and track that over time so the farmers can see how her milk production is. Now, when we're ready to make cheese, we have to add a special ingredient called rennet. And rennet is an enzyme that actually thickens the milk and it's gonna separate the curds, which is the solid part, the part we wanna keep for our cheese, from the whey, which is the liquid part. And that's how we get our cheese for our pizza. All right, so moving on to pepperoni. So pepperoni is a meat. Does anyone know which animal pepperoni comes from? So pepperoni comes from pigs and sausage comes from pigs too. Um, so both of those meats are a type of pork. Um, some other types of pork that you might eat are bacon or pulled pork or ham um, or pork chops. All of those things come from pigs. Now pigs, sometimes in the movies, we'll see pigs eating slop or garbage or things like that. And that's not true at all. So pigs are actually fed a special diet of ground up corn and soybean meal mixed with vitamins and minerals um, to help them grow nice and big and strong. So when pigs are born, they usually weigh two to three pounds. Um, and then over about a six month period, they're going to grow. And when they reach 280 pounds, that's when they're at market weight. So that's when they're going to be sold off and processed into all the meats that we like. And actually here in Illinois, we rank fourth in pork production. So we have a lot of pig farms here. So that's where our pepperoni and our sausage is coming from. Okay, so let's move on to some additional toppings here. Maybe some ones that you guys weren't as crazy about, but that a lot of people really like. So our first one is the bell pepper or green pepper. Now, do you think that a green pepper is a fruit or a vegetable? All right, if you said a fruit, you are right. Just like our tomatoes, um, our peppers actually are fruit as well. They come from the flowering part of the plant and they have their seeds on the inside. If you've ever cut open a green pepper or seen your parents cut one open, you'll see all those seeds right down the middle. So green peppers, we can grow them here in Illinois in our gardens or we might see them at the farmer's markets, um, but they really like warmer climates to be able to grow a lot of them. So they're grown more in places like California and Florida and then they're shipped all over the country. Now something really cool about green peppers is they actually change color the longer you leave them on the vine. So when you see a red bell pepper, it actually started out as a green bell pepper and it changed colors the longer it stayed on its vine. Now red peppers taste a little bit different from when they were green. Um, they're actually a little sweeter and they're usually thicker or heavier uh, because they've had more time to mature. So the next time you see a green pepper or a red pepper in the store, you'll know something cool about them. Okay, so moving on to mushrooms. Now, mushrooms are a little different from the other plants and animals that we talked about. Um, mushrooms are actually a fungus, so they live off decaying matter, decaying plants and animals. Um, and they really like a dark and moist and cool environment. So on mushroom farms, um, farmers will actually grow mushrooms indoors. Um, and mushrooms don't need light to grow. Um, we know most of the plants um, that we've seen, they need light to do photosynthesis and to be able to grow and produ produce food for themselves. Well, mushrooms actually don't need that. Um, so these mushrooms are actually hand-picked um, between 16 and 35 days, um, kind of on a rotation. Um, and so they actually will double in size um, every day as they grow. So I've got a cool time-lapse video here I wanna show you so that you can see these mushrooms actually growing inside. All 
All right, so we've got our mushrooms that are grown and then they're gonna be handpicked and processed and shipped um, all around for us to buy at the store. All right, so now we've got our very last pizza topping that we're gonna talk about and that is pineapples. Um, now pineapples are fruit. Can we grow pineapples here in Illinois? No, we can't grow pineapples here in Illinois. Pineapples are a tropical fruit, so they need a really warm environment to grow. Um, the main places that we grow them here in the United States is Hawaii, um, and then some in California and Florida. But most of the pineapples that we would buy here in the store are actually grown in Central America. Now these pineapple plants, each plant only grows one pineapple and it takes about six months for that pineapple to mature and grow. So it takes a really long time. Now these pineapples are harvested by hand um, so that they don't get bruised. And they also have to have special equipment to do this um, and special clothing because the leaves of these pineapple plants are really sharp. So I have one last video here for you. And this is from Dole um, from one of their farms in Costa Rica. So let's take a look and see how pineapples are harvested. Pineapples are harvested ripe and ready to eat. At Dole's Moye Farm in Costa Rica, harvesting occurs six days a week. At 6 a.m., our harvest team begins their workday. The crew always dresses in protective clothing. Freshly cleaned work clothes and safety gear are provided by Dole each morning and are collected again each evening for washing. The protective clothing differs depending on the work. For harvesting, rugged jeans, chaps, thick gloves, and protective glasses are worn to safeguard against the spiky bromeliad leaves. The pineapple fields have been split into blocks. The respective blocks are divided among the workers. While the harvest is underway, the foreman inspects the next blocks to be harvested. Pineapples are regularly sampled for quality. Workers check their flesh color and use a refractometer to measure sugar content. When the shell takes on a rich golden hue and the flesh is sweet and juicy, the pineapples are ready for picking. Pineapples are harvested at the peak of ripeness and don't ripen any further or get sweeter after picking. We use a specialized conveyor called a boom harvester, which gradually moves through the field. The size of the blocks is designed specifically for our harvesting equipment. The pineapples are picked by hand. Workers carefully place the fruit on the conveyor as pineapples are sensitive to bruising and damage. The conveyor carries them to the field bin where they are quickly but gently transferred by hand. The crown of a pineapple provides an ideal cushion for transport, so the fruits are stored upside down in the bins. Full bins are taken to the packing facility where the pineapples are prepared for their journey to markets around the world. So that is where our pineapples come from. So now you know some things about your pizza ingredients and how they're produced um, all over the world and here in the United States too. So I wanna thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching. I hope you learned something new and we will see you next time. Bye.